Hello folks and welcome back to the Microsoft 365 DSC YouTube channel. Today I feel a little bit community inspired. I dusted off my old MVP shirt from back in 2014, 2015 I think. I put on my collaboration summit at it is a tough time. I've been stuck home for eight weeks now. Uh, it's tough on the kids. My wife works at the hospital, so she's working full time. And uh, but the good news is that the kids are starting back school next week, so they are super excited about this, and so are the parents as well. Uh, today, what I want to share with you are some very exciting news, as always. But this time around, we've introduced three major new features as part of our latest Microsoft 365 DSC releases. The first one I want to go through is something called the Test M365 DSC Agent. A few folks from the community have been trying to get started with the tool and ran into some issues while running it for the first time. A couple of things that are required when you try to install the tool. The first off is that if you already have some existing versions of PowerShell modules, such as the Azure module, so the Azure AD, sorry, if you go and run install module Azure AD, and then you try to install Microsoft 365 DSC on top of it, you might get an error that will say that the commands already exist. Reason for this is that under the cover, Microsoft 365 DSC now leverages Azure AD Preview. And Azure AD Preview uses the same names for the commonlets as the normal Azure AD. So what you need to do is you need to go and run install-module uh, Microsoft 365 DSC allow Clover. So a couple of things like that, right? And what we wanted to do was to make it very easy for people to start troubleshooting issues with their environment. So what we've done is we created a new commandlet called test M365 DSC agent. By running this on a machine, what it will actually do, yes, of course, you require the module to be installed first. But what it will do is it will scan the current environment for some of the most known issues, right? Things like the max envelope size is not set properly, which means you cannot execute a DSC file that's bigger than 512K, which in most cases, there's a pretty good chance that your configuration will be bigger than this, especially if you're dealing with multiple workloads. Um, version of PowerShell, we require PowerShell 5.1. Well, we recommend running PowerShell 5.1 when you're doing the extract. There's nothing preventing you from doing it with PowerShell 4, but it's not recommended. So it will actually flag it as a recommendation. So we're gonna be building on that command with, uh, within the future releases, but right now it does scan some of the most common issues uh, to help you troubleshoot the installation. The second one is one of the biggest asks we've had from the get-go is this ability to generate reports out of your extraction or out of any configuration for that matter, right? So the idea that, yes, you've exported the configuration out of your existing Microsoft 365 tenant, but you want to generate a report that the users can consume. You don't want to just have them look at a PS1 file and go through it. So what we can do now is we've introduced a new command called new M365 uh, DSC report, report from configuration, sorry. And basically this command has two types. You can go in, you can do either an export to Excel or you could do an export to HTML. Let's say we want to do an export to Excel. It's going to ask me what's the, uh, this, the configuration path. So I'm going to point it to my DSC source.ps1 file and the output file, output path, sorry, for my file is going to be DSC demo.xlsx, right? So what it's going to do is under the cover, it's going to leverage a new dependency that we've introduced in Microsoft 365 DSC, which is called the DSC parser. It's going to take that configuration, it's going to convert it to an object, and then it's going to be able to generate reports out of it. So you can see from here that it went on and it's actually generating that report. You can see that it is parsing my file right now. So it's inside of my configuration, we have 623 items, so different resources, so fairly big configuration. And what it's going to do once this is done is it's going to go and convert those into objects and generate my Excel report. Now, given that Excel report might not be the most user-friendly thing ever, but I still believe it's better than having plain PS1 content in there. And you can see it being generated as we speak. And what's highlighted in green is the primary key or the unique identifier for that resource. So it's gonna go in, it's gonna take a few minutes for it to complete. I'm gonna turn this off uh, now just to let it go. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to save this. I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this time around, I'm going to pick an HTML report, which should be a little faster to generate. I am going to go in, I'm going to change the extension. I'm going to call it HTML. And then here for my type, I'm going to pick HTML. So again, same thing It's going to go in, it's going to parse the object. So we're going to see the parsing happen. So 623 items. And once it's done, it's actually going to generate an HTML report that looks similar to what we have on the blueprint section of the official Microsoft 365 DSC.com website. If you folks have been to the website, you click on blueprints at the top and we have some vetted configuration available. If you open one of them, you're going to see a report that looks similar to what the output of this command is going to be. Um, we're going to give it a few seconds to complete. And this is going to generate a full report Every resource inside of your configuration is going to be mapped to an HTML table, and then you can go and quickly glance at what you have inside of your configuration. So this is something you can give to your users, right? If your users are not that techy, you export the configuration using export M365 DSC configuration, and then you just take that configuration and you send it through that command, and it will generate a report out of it. So it should take a few more seconds. There we go. It's going to generate the file. And then what I'm going to get is that HTML report directly uh, at the output path. So I see my demo.html. I can open this and here's what it looks like, right? So all my Azure ED items, uh, what my naming policies are. So I'm preventing people from using the word CIO, uh, CEO and president as part of their file, exchange, security and compliance. So everything is listed there, right? That is very cool but not as cool as that third new feature that we've introduced, which is the single most requested feature, which is the ability to generate Delta reports. Yes, thank you. So basically what we can do now is we can take two configuration files and compare them with one another and generate a discrepancy report out of it. Yes, of course, you can do something like win merge and compare the two of them, uh, but it's not gonna be as effective as what, as what we built in right now. So let's take a quick example here. So the new command, by the way, is called new M365 DSC. Um, I believe it's Delta report, there we go. I still have to get used to those new namings. So the first thing it takes on is a source. Right, so new DSC Delta report source. I'm going to go and do CDSC source.ps1. So this is my configuration um, that I've extracted from one of my tenants. My destination is going to be another extract of the same tenant, but at a different point in time. Right, so this is a great example where you can actually have this um, store discipline in your enterprise where you do monthly ex export of your configuration and then every month you actually compare that new export with what you had the month before and that delta report is going to tell you exactly what changed in your tenant over the past 30 days yeah very powerful right um, so destination is my file then it's going to ask me where i want to store my delta report i'm just going to go and do delta.html now the delta report is only going to be an html format just because of the structure of how we want to present it and we have that table of content that lets you drill directly to certain uh, components of the delta report you're going to see that in just a while so i'm going to go in i'm going to run this now what it's going to do is it's going to parse both my source and my destination configuration so you can see my source again 623 items uh, it's going to take a few seconds and then what it will do is it will check for three things it will check the first one is what exists in the source that doesn't exist in the destination right so what items what policies i have in the source that are not present in the destination is going to do the opposite what items do i have in the destination that are not in the source right and then it's going to categorize those in the report. So you're going to be able to quickly see what's in the source, not in the destination, vice versa. And then the third one is, of course, what drifts do you have, right? So what's in the, what resources exist in both but have different properties. So right now it's parsing my destination. We can see right from the get-go that my destination has 621 items. So for sure, there are at least two items in the source that are not in my destination tenant. There might be more, but there are at least two. Now what it's doing is scanning each, right? So it's scanning my source to see what's in there that's not in my destination tenant, and it'll do the opposite. I've done this report for um, configuration that had over 6,500 
resources in there, so fairly large um, reports, and it took about 10 minutes to generate the report, which is not that bad, to be honest, uh, given the, the the amount of information that is being, uh, that's being processed, right? So this is definitely something you want to do. Now, I mentioned previously that the example I'm running right now is basically assessing two-point in-time configuration. So I've extracted my configuration tenant, my source file was extracted on Monday this week, and I've just about 20 minutes ago extracted my destination, right? So this is the integration tenant where we play, we create stuff, we delete stuff. It's basically just a QA environment. So I know there were gonna be some discrepancies. So I took the same tenant, but I took different point in time ex export, and I I'm doing a delta analysis on those two point in times uh, extract. The other thing you can do is you can compare two tenants, right? So if you have multiple tenants in your company and you know, for example, that the security and compliance layer should be the same across all of them, you can just go and export the configuration from two of them at a time, right? And then you would go, all right, so what's different between the two? And you know that they, there should be no discrepancies whatsoever. So you can either assess two different tenants or you can assess the same tenant, but at different uh, point in time. So it's gonna be done in just a few seconds and automatically it should launch my report, boom. So this is my Delta report. It looks similar to what we had when we were just generating a straight out HTML report. Um, but what I can see right from the get go is that, you know what, here are some resources. So you remember I was telling you that there were at least two resources in the source that were not in destination. There are actually three of them. There's one resource that is in the destination that's not in the source and there are three discrepancies. So Discrepancies really mean the resource instance exists in both, but they have different values for their properties. So let's have a look here. So the resource that's currently missing in my source is a Teams calling policy called allow prevent toll bypass. So I can just open my configuration and search for that and I'll find exactly what's missing and I can add it to my destination configuration if I want. Uh, in my uh, destination, so here are some resources that exist only in my source. So I have an EXO remote domain. I have a file plan, a security and compliance file plan property category called account receivable that's not there, and an SPO site audit setting. Then what I have, and at the top, you have the table of content, of course, and you can drill down directly to a specific section. So what's different? So in my source, I have all right, so an EXO, EXO remote domain named tsystemco.hu. The property that's different is trust and mail outbound enable. In the source, it's set to true, but in the destination, it's set to false. And on the same resource, the target delivery domain is set to true, and the other one is set to false. So I have a sensitivity label where the priority is not the same, and a team's meeting policy, which in the source tenant, enables uh, basically allow channel meeting scheduling and it's set to, uh, sorry, the opposite. It's disabled in the source and it's enabled in the destination. So again, this is something people have been asking for forever since the beginning of the project. It's out there, free for grab. It's on the GitHub repo. It's being published to the gallery as we speak. So by the time you're watching this recording, just go install module Microsoft 365 DSC and you can leverage the power of those three new features that we've introduced. On that note, folks, I hope you enjoy the weekend. It is Friday right now, at least for me. Um, then stay safe and we'll talk again soon. Thanks.